Good morning. This is Philip with RTX Honeybees. I want to talk to you guys for a minute about uh, swarm traps and swarm season. We're coming up on swarm season. Uh, our swarm season officially starts for me March 1st. I don't expect to catch any swarms until April, but you want to get them up in plenty of time for them to be up and the bees to, to be able to find them because the bees will be out foraging and scouting. Uh, they're probably out doing that right now. So this video is not about how to catch a swarm. There's plenty of videos online about that. Um, one of my favorites is uh, Nathan over at Duck River Honey. He has a, a really nice video where he goes into all the steps, what kind of what you different things you can use, where you need to put things, all of that. So uh, go check out Nathan if you want to know how to catch them. I will be showing you how I put these up in another video, and maybe I'll go into some of that. Um, the... Uh, the, Dr. T Thomas Seeley said that uh, the bees are looking for a certain size cavity, and he equated that. I think he put it in liters, but it, it was equated to generally the size of a 10-frame deep uh, box. Nothing wrong with getting your 10-frame deep box and putting some frames in there, hanging it on a tree, you know, building some kind of bottom. Once again, Nathan goes into a lot of that on his video, but... Uh, but that's generally what they're looking for. I don't have quite that much volume in these. I have eight frames, enough to hold eight frames, not 10, so it's a little bit undersized. But what I can do is, since I build these in three equal boxes, I just, well, I'll, I'll take the top off of that, but I just keep stacking them up. So I, I have put these up in three highs uh, to, do, to accomplish that. So. Why did I build this for a, a swarm trap? Why didn't I just do the plywood box that so many people use? Well, one thing you know uh, after you've been beekeeping for a little while is the equipment starts to really stack up. So having that box for a that other kind of box, just a plain box with a hole drilled in the bottom of it for a swarm trap, those take up a lot of space and they've only got one use. I really wanted something that had multiple uses. Uh, and another goal I had was I wanted something that I could take to a friend's house. If they had a lot of honeybees visiting their yard, I could take to a friend's house and say, hey, you mind if I hang a bait hive on your fence? And I wanted something that was attractive enough that would look good in their garden area. So I believe I accomplished that. So what other uses do, does my box have? Well, it's Three, it's two or three deep boxes that hold four frames. Now, it's also very simple in the way I make it. So I can use this for a swarm trap. I use it to keep bees in. As a matter of fact, I, this, this winter I have two, uh, two of these that, have, that, that are overwintering bees, and they both, both are working uh, quite well for that. You could use them for four frame nukes. They hold four frames of, uh, they, they hold four frames. So, oh, by the way, these, both of these boxes have some yellow jackets overwintering in them. So if I yell, <laughs> that means I got stung, but I'm going to pick this up. I'll come back on a cold day and kill them. I don't think they're going to sting me because they're not protecting me. But see, it holds four frames. All right. And this is, this is something that's very important if you're going to go out and build these yourself. The end bars, not the, the, the ends of these boxes, this is a six inch fence board. Now, you need to get the one that's really six inches, not the one that's nominally six inches and ends up being about five and a quarter. Uh, I know Home Depot is where I got mine, but they, they sell what they call a true six inch. I find that these are almost always five and three quarters of an inch wide. The reason that's important is because you're gonna, not going to be able to get four frames in a five and a quarter inch, but you will be able to get. So here's a, here's a comparison. This board's called six inches, but it's really five and a quarter. This board is also called six inches, but it's five and three quarters and sometimes five and seven eighths. When it's brand new, it might be six inches. It probably shrank a little bit over time. Another tip, before you put these together, bring these inside and let them dry out completely. 
because they, when they're wet, they're much bigger. And if you put them together wet, you're going to have a lot of gaps to deal with in your boxes. So make sure they're good and dry before you start to cut them up and, and assemble the boards. Okay. So back to uses. Four frame nuke is one use. Full hive is another use. You could keep stacking these up as long as you, you know, strap them down. They are a little bit, you know, unsteady. Uh, say you're got these all set up and then all of a sudden you're going through one of your colonies and you find a bunch of queen cells. Well, and you don't have anywhere to make splits into. Well, you could actually take these, just put a bottom in there and I'll show you in a second how to do that. Here's the bottom right here. I have that. That's not really a vent. That's the way I treat for uh, Varroa mites with oxalic acid, but we'll get into that later. Uh, you know, it's just a piece of plywood screwed to the bottom, literally with a couple of screws. I think I just used two. There they are right there. Two screws to the bottom. Now put your bottom in this. Basically set you a board on top or grab a top off of your other oh, your other one. And now you've got, for every swarm trap, you've got two queen mating nukes to work with. So, geez. well, I'll tell you what, let me talk to you guys about the different uh, versions of this box. I've been building these for two years. The first year I built them, I made these pieces right here that overlap one inch. And what I found is that they wouldn't, they wouldn't stay stacked. The wind would blow and I had to use, like, like that one up there on the fence, I had to use a strap keep them together and I didn't like that I just don't think it looks kind of tacky to me so I changed that up a little bit and I made it this deeper so I can actually put screws in and hold these boxes together so you see that piece on the bottom I even uh, and another improvement I made is I sloped the top slightly to sort of uh, shed water the bottom of these are rabbited because when you build these these boxes out of these fence boards, they're going to be warped. You can see a little warpage there. And they're not going to stack perfectly. So I put a little rabbit in there to give these a little bit of play. So uh, you put that on there. There's just a little bit of uh, just enough play so those will actually stack. If you didn't cut that rabbit into this piece, they're not, they're not ever going to go together correctly. Another thing I did differently was the first version of these, I cut a little frame rest into this piece and then I ended up having to add a piece anyway because this is too thin to really get a proper frame rest. So now I just cut these a little bit longer and I attach a piece of 5 8 just the next piece of fence board. See this one, I maybe got a little too wide so I actually just added another piece. One, things I, do, one thing I do with these is I season them. But I'll take wax and I'll just wipe it on the inside here with a roller. Just roll it inside, inside here. Um, and I also take some propolis and put it on the bottom and take a heat gun and melt it in there. So I'll put some propolis in there too. Um, a third way I season these, which is probably the best way, is it's what I'm doing this year. I keep bees in, in, in these. I've got one here in Capel. I've got one in Richland. But if you keep bees in there for a year or even a month, probably, they're going to propolize the inside of it and give it all that bee smell it needs. So what, what I'll do when I go uh, to set up my traps this year, I'll take the bees out of the ones they're in, put them in newer, newer boxes that haven't had bees before, and I'll take those boxes and set them up, and they'll have bee smell. This box here is a good example. It, it only served as a feeder shim. But the bees still propolized it quite a bit there and between the boxes. You can see all the propolis they put in there. So this box is seasoned pretty good to catch swarms. So how successful are these things? They've been pretty successful for me. Uh, two years ago, 20, 2021, I caught, I lost count, 16 to 18 swarms. I caught three here in Capel and I caught the rest down at the farm. But last year was just a bad year for catching swarms, I guess. 
I only caught uh, two swarms and they were both down in the country. So I guess the verdict's still out. I don't know if you could blame it on the box. I think it's really got more to do with just the season. But I'm looking forward to a good strong swarm season this year. So how do I hang these up? Out of the same fence boards, I build a bracket. Okay. Now, when you do this, and I learned from year one to year two, you want to give yourself a little bit of play here, and you want to set the back, not at the back edge of the bracket, because if you have a tree that's leaning like this, it's going to keep, your, keep you from setting your box. So you want to set the back of your box, and it sandwiches between these two. Okay, let me see if I can show you guys that. If you could pretend this had a bottom in it. See, it fits right there between those two. All right, you want to line that up in the middle. Once again, you take two screws, put them right through here. I usually come on the back side. Or from a lot of times, if the tree's here and it's big, you have to come. But I'll, I'll drive a screw up through the bottom. Sometimes down through this frame, so it's attached front and back. This bracket is one I made to hang on a on a fence. Or a tree but I have since replaced this piece with a piece of a two by four treated and the reason I do that is because I make a version of this and it's even longer that hangs on to a, a T post so what I do is I put a U bolt through here two places top and bottom and I'll drive a T post in the ground and I'll hang these on a T post when I hang my boxes this year you guys will see that uh, that installation but uh, all that stuff's out at the farm not here this this is the, the urban bracket what I do to bait these is take some lemongrass oil lemongrass essential oil uh, or you can use uh, if you want to you can use a, a, a swarm lure like uh, I'm drawing a blank swarm rustler that's sold by Bob Walker of Walker Bee Ranch. Anyway, I put a few drops of lemongrass essential oil. I rub it inside this hole, and then I play, push it in the top, and then I, sand, I cinch that down on there, so it, you know, stays in there. If you forget, you don't you, you lose these. Don't have any Q-tips. You can always I use any kind of uh, this one. I think I well that's a something for catching hive beetles, a swisher, a swiffer towel. So that works too. So just put your drops on there, rub it around the top, put it right there. Inside these, I put, you know, deep frames. Now, last year, which I didn't have much success, I don't think this caused it, and I don't get to check these as often as I should. I put it. I put frames in the top and the bottom. I think it works better if you give them space in the bottom, especially if you're using some kind of plastic foundation, because the bees need to be able to go side to side. Um, another thing that really helps, you know, wax wiped in there, propolis in there, having some kind of old dirty piece of comb in your box to give it that bee smell really helps also if you have it. Well, that, I think that's all on the swarm traps. I would like to give you guys a sneak preview of an upcoming video. If you watch this, when I pull one of these frames out. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Make sure I don't get stung here. Okay. Watch out. Check that bad boy out. That right there is called a Texas Deep. Something I'm playing around with. I've got these in one small colony this year. But I'm hoping to get, I don't know, two or three. Uh, two or three of my units going with these Texas Deep frames. That's a little... Just a little, uh, that's just a little preview of an upcoming video. I'll talk 
talk to you guys more about why I'm doing that. And hopefully you can follow along. All right, that wraps it up. You guys get ready. Bee season is on its way. The girls are really flying. It's 60 degrees today, so take care. Thank you for watching.